Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today we are talking marigolds, because it is Medicinal Friday. All right guys, so this is my current marigold situation, and we are going to talk about why I have this many marigolds just drying on my countertop. So guys, before we really get started, I want to remind you guys to make sure you subscribe to the channel and then head over to Instagram and follow Mighty Crop because we are giving away, we're having our 10K giveaway, which we are giving away a set of Mighty Crop and a $50 gift card and a seed, seed organizer for you to expand your small space garden or even start one of your own. So let's talk miracles. Now these ones are already dry and I'm gonna pull some out so that you can kind of see what they look like when they're dried. But I wanna talk about the health benefits of marigolds. Now, a lot of you guys probably have these growing in your garden because they uh, are good for the bees, they look pretty, or they re are there to repel insects, or sometimes they're just growing wild all over your backyard. I know when I was young, these grew wild all over our backyards, but I never used it as medicine. So now that I am an adult, I realized how amazing marigolds are, and now I have them in my medicinal cabinet, as well as always growing in my backyard when I can. Now, I do want to start off by saying that if you have any type of medical condition or anything like that, you want to consult your doctor before doing any type of natural or herbal medicine, just to make sure it's not counteracting anything that you're doing or that you're taking. But, and then also recommend a book, this one is the herbal antibiotics and this one gives, is a good book because it gives you a lot of dosages so amounts where you will take for an adult amounts you'll take for a child and then how to make your certain tinctures um, it gives you percentages and dosages and all that kind of stuff that you would need in order for treatments now how can we use these little amazing flowers so when it comes to the human body, marigolds are used for two major things. One, skin health, and the other, eye health. Now, marigolds contain, I'm gonna write this right here, guys, just in case I say it wrong, but it, can, it contains lutein and zyozactin. And those are two components that help with the eyes and helps create the, uh, or helps keep the eye healthy, especially if you have early signs or early uh, macro, de macro degeneration of the eye. I knew I was gonna stumble through this one. <laughs> So if you are having overall eye issues or you're weakening of your eyes or starting to deal with just macular degeneration, then marigolds is going to be your best friend because of those two compounds that it has in it, that is what kind of slows down that process and creates a better healthy environment for the eye itself. Also marigolds is packed with antiseptic and anti-inflammatory properties. So if you get an eye infection and you have like swelling of your eye or a goop in your eye or pink eye, any type of thing like that, one of the best things to do is to take the flower tops off of your marigold. Now you don't want to get the this part or the stem, you just want to get the flower part and just cut that off into your jar and then you want to be able to make a tea out of it. Now, when you make your tea, you're gonna let it cool all the way down, and then you can use that tea as an eye rinse and clean out, and it'll help clean out any type of bacteria that is in the eye. So it is one that won't irritate your eye or you won't have a hard time with it. Um, also making this a tea, you can also drink it too as well. That will help with macular degeneration and creating a healthier environment for your eye by creating a healthier environment inside your body. So eye health is where you wanna go, or marigolds are where you wanna go for eye health. So next, marigolds are amazing for your skin. One of my favorite um, toners to make for my skin is to take marigolds and also rose petals and to let them soak in witch hazel. I let them soak in witch hazel until the witch hazel turns a color. So basically takes all of that nice beautiful 
health benefits from that marigolds and from the uh, the roses and then I use that on my skin as a skin toner after washing my face. So this is a great anti-inflammatory so it'll help to uh, calm down any type of um, acne or any type of swelling in the face, any type of cyst or anything like that. Um, you can also use it as just making or brewing it with um, just water and steeping it and then putting it on a eye mask and then putting that on your on your face. So if you're waking up with puffy eyes or anything like that, that is a great way to kind of calm that, that inflammation around your eyes. So it really, really helps with those. It's also very rich in vitamin A, it's um, antioxidant, and it's really good just for your overall health. So uh, one person had asked me about inflammation and said, what was the best way from inflammation? And one of the things I asked was, what type of inflammation? Because you can have inflammation pretty much anywhere, and there's a lot of different things that can help with that inflammation depending on where it is in the part of the body. Marigold is great for kind of like an overall inflammation. It's not so much targeted, targeted, but overall inflammation it does help with. So cooking with marigolds, um, you can cut up the flowers, put them inside a salad. One of the best ways I like to use it is I saute it with onions and mushrooms and put it on top of the steak or with some eggs or anything like that. And getting that those antioxidants in your body really does help with just overall body inflammation. The other thing that it does is it will help soothe the mucous membrane in your throat. So if you feel like a sore throat coming on or just pain in your throat or if you're having a hard time with your asthma, marigolds is a great way to kind of help with that. So when I'm making my asthma tea, I have started adding marigolds to that just to kind of help soothe that mucous membrane in my throat in order to make it a little bit easier for me to breathe when we are having these super dry, windy, Arizona summers. Now when you're thinking outside in your garden, marigolds are good for insect repellents. Now I've always tried to put marigolds in my beds as insect repellents and it they always die in the, in the bed. But if I put them in a pot in front of the bed, it stays alive. But then I notice that whatever plants behind it then thrives. So right now behind my marigold plant, I have my basil and I have my shishito pepper and my shishito pepper is ginormous and my basil is nice and bushy and the marigolds are just sitting there right in front of it. So one of the things I am going to try for the winter slash spring when we start getting white flies and some marigolds are really good for repelling white flies which is something that I get in my garden. I am going to brew it and just make a marigold tea and then spray my plants with the marigold tea since I can never grow it inside the beds. I thought that might be a great way and I will report back to you guys on how that works. Now on the downside marigolds do attract spider mites and snails. So if you have spider mite issues which we get that later in the summer, which is typically when the marigolds die. Usually they die from spider mite damage, actually. So if you have spider mite problems earlier on, you don't want to plant this next to plants that really attract spider mites. Like I would not plant my marigolds next to my okra because my okra always is like a beacon for spider mites. And if marigolds are a beacon for spider mites, that's just two beacons pointing up in the sky. <laughs> the other thing is snails. We don't get snails here in Arizona, but if you get snails, don't plant marigolds next to your plants that also get eaten by snails. But one insect that absolutely hates marigolds are ants. So if you do have an ant issue, you can create a little marigold bar barrier or you can do what I'm gonna do and try making a spray and spraying your plants or spraying the area where you have ants. I am definitely gonna try this for when we get ants. We'll get ants probably later in the summer. I wanna say probably around August, September-ish, we'll probably start seeing ants and I will spray down wherever I see them and see if it actually works and report back to you guys. So the other thing that I almost forgot to mention is that marigolds can be used as a hair rinse too as well. Um, it's really good for if you have oily hair, which I do not, so I don't use it as a hair rinse, but it can be used as a hair rinse to help with oily hair and dandruff. So I hope that that gave you guys something to think about to put in your medicinal cabinet that you're probably already growing in your garden or that is growing wild in your garden or your neighbor's garden or your backyard or somewhere. So remember that 
A lot of plants provide medicine for you guys. So go out there, start collecting them, start getting your medicine cabinets nice and strong to where then you can handle any type of situation that goes on either for yourself or for your family. Also, don't forget to get yourself books so that you know what goes with what, why it goes with what, and what it treats. Because having that information is something that not only will it help you, but it's something that you can pass down in your family. One of the reasons why I love doing Medicinal Fridays is because I feel like medicine is getting lost. Like, not just going to the hospital medicine, but true medicine. The true ways of how to fix your body, how to heal yourselves without having all of these crazy side effects. Granted, some medicinal medicines do have a couple of side effects, but they're not ones that are just putting chemicals into your body that's really tearing down your body. So try and be as natural as possible, guys, because it will help you more in the long run. At least that's what I believe. <laughs> so until next time, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye guys.